Hi everyone, Ian Harvey here, massage therapist. Today we're going to talk about one of the rotator cuff muscles, the subscapularis. This is an internal or medial rotator, and it's one of the four very important scapular muscles that is often overlooked or underworked. We're going to start with some anatomy, some self-palpation, and then we're going to work on a client. If you'd like to skip ahead, click in the time codes down in the description. So why would you want to work on subscapularis? Well, in my opinion, it can be the missing link in a lot of frozen shoulder and other shoulder ailment treatments. If you're not working this very important muscle, then you're not working the entire rotator cuff. In fact, I feel like subscapularis can be the source of a lot of these frozen shoulder type problems and any sort of limited range of motion. Now we tend to blame a lot of these problems on supraspinatus, but I think that it might be the victim in a lot of cases that as these other muscles are dysfunctioning, that supraspinatus is having to engage in a tug of war and getting trapped under this acromion process more than it would be otherwise. So. Think globally, think of all of these muscles that attach to this shoulder girdle, including subscapularis. So some quick anatomy, subscapularis originates in the subscapular fossa, the anterior portion of the scapula that faces the thoracic region, and it comes around to the front of your humerus here to the lesser tubercle. And imagine what happens when those two points come together. As this point gets pulled toward your scapula, it rotates internally. Subscapularis is here. It's sandwiched between the scapula and your ribs. So your scapula and your rib cage form a sandwich with subscapularis as the meat. Serratus anterior is in there too, but that's another video. Subscapularis is a medial rotator, otherwise known as an internal rotator. So anytime you're doing this motion, subscap is involved. So it's helping pectoralis major out to medially rotate your arm. Also with the other four rotator cuff muscles, it's forming a cuff and it's pulling that head of the humerus in and keeping it well seated in that glenoid fossa. Now, as you can imagine, if these four muscles, the subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor, if they're all pulling too hard or if one is pulling too much, that can cause this glenohumeral joint to dysfunction a bit. And for some of these movements that used to be so easy to suddenly become difficult or even anxiety inducing because it can feel like bone on bone contact as things get really squished up in here. Before we work on a client, I'd like you to feel subscap on yourself. In order to do that, you're going to need to take your thumb and place it into the darkest, stinkiest part of your armpit. Doop. And sink that in as you drop your arm. So your hand is going to get sandwiched under your arm, your thumb is going to get trapped in your armpit, and you'll be able to press posteriorly, so press backwards, and you'll be pressing against bone. I want you to press against the front of your scapula. Sink in and feel that interesting landscape. You'll know that you're on subscapularis if you internally rotate and press against your other elbow. You'll feel it jump up. If you just feel a very lateral muscle jump up, that's teres major, and you're not far enough into your armpit yet. So sink a little bit further, feel for resistance coming from your scapula, and then try that test again. Once you've found that, move your arm around a little and see if you can feel all of the landscape on the front of that scapula. Explore more immediately, explore more laterally, explore it superiorly and inferiorly, because subscapularis covers the entire front of that scapula. Just a word of caution, there is a lot of vascular and nervous and lymphatic tissue in there, so don't do a lot of digging. Don't feel like you need to friction this area out. And also be kind both to yourself and to your client when you work here because it's probably the first time this muscle has ever been touched. So we've got Rachel here with us. Hi. So there are three ways of interacting with the subscapularis that I'd like you to be familiar with. I do have some jojoba oil on my hands because I don't want to create too much discomfort 
um, as I'm working in the axillary region. So I want to make sure that there is some lubrication. The way that you might be familiar with working with subscapularis might be from medial to lateral. So coming in under this medial border of the scapula, and that might look something like this. And you can either put the person's arm behind their back or just lift up on their shoulder a bit. And you can get under here and you can do some frictioning, etc., etc. Just realize that if you're trying to do this, you're working through the rhomboids and you're working through some other tissue that might not want you to have good access to that subscapular region. Not only that, when you're working from this direction, you're only able to hit the barest edge of subscapularis on the most tendinous portion. And that can be worthwhile. It's definitely worth including, but I don't think that that's going to accomplish all that you want it to accomplish. Now, one way I've already shown you, and that's to come at this from the side using your thumbs, and it looks something like this. Hello. Uh, when I do this, I'll usually kneel down and just think of this as starting with petrissage, go very slowly because this axillary region can be a little bit ticklish and you're working your thumbs up under the scapula. See if you can palpate tissue that's on the anterior surface of that scapula. It will feel kind of ropey and lumpy, a lot like infraspinatus. If you don't feel that texture, sink in a bit more, but only do that if you're already comfortable working on your own subscap. So from another angle, that looks like this. Just gently working my thumbs up under the scapula, using my fingers to pull the scapula toward me. And once I'm here, I can either just wait around with my thumbs sunk into that subscapular region, waiting to feel this tissue soften. Just as a reminder, there's an awful lot of vasculature and lymphatic tissue and nerves down here, so I don't recommend any specific frictioning. But do feel free to sink in. But do think broad. I'm using my thumb pads here. I'm not using my thumb tips. The second way is to use your fingertips. This way is going to feel a little bit sharper, but it's a great way of mobilizing the scapula as you make contact with that subscapular region. I'm going to press inferiorly with one hand. I've got this elbow sunk into my hip, so this is coming from my stance. I'm not just shoving using my pecs. And this other hand comes under. Once again, these fingers are aimed up toward the subscapular fossa. And pressing up toward the ceiling. And with this, I can either get quite specific using my fingertips, just by using one or two, or I can be quite broad using my finger pads and using three at once. Pinky isn't doing a lot here. And just by shifting my position, I can mobilize this scapula. As you do this work, remember that there's a lot to this subscapularis to be worked with. There's the region that's more superior. So sink your fingers up toward the acromioclavicular joint. A region that's more inferior and of course lateral. As you come out more laterally, you're also going to be interacting with teres major and minor, and you can work with all of these tissues at once. The last way is while your client is supine. To do this, you'll need to bring their arm up into some abduction, use your fingertips, and press down into their axillary region. So if you're afraid of the armpit, you'll never be able to access this. And from another angle, that looks like this. Press down toward that subscapular fossa. If you're not quite sure where you are, have your client come into medial rotation. And Rachel, do that motion one more time and release. And if you feel that muscle jump up, you're definitely on subscapularis. And you'll find that you can access quite a bit of subscap from this position. And if you 
want to sink in for a prolonged period in the most comfortable way possible, bring their arm over their chest. And Rachel, take your other arm and grab hold of this and see if you can let both arms rest. And now you can take this hand and draw that other shoulder downward as your right hand continues to palpate subscapularis. And again, I'm not going to do any specific digging. I'm just sinking in. I'm exploring the topology and I'm waiting for some melting to happen. To come out of this, retrieve their wrist and then come out very slowly. All right, you guys, that's it for subscap. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you have any techniques of your own, let me know. Consider subscribing and I'll see you next time.